Hello. Welcome along to Adventures and Pop. This is episode 53, would you believe it? My name's Simon Jacobs, um, and I, I should say this a little bit more often than I do, but this series is about uh, writing and recording pop music, um, which is what I do in this little space here. Um, and I'm, I'm more interested in talking about the process of coming up with a song, what makes a good song, um, you know, what to write about, how you got the, the process of the writing more than the process of the recording. Because I think, and I've said this before, there are loads and loads of um, YouTube tutorials um, right around the internet that will tell you lots of stuff about how to do the, you know, the geeky stuff. Uh, and it's really important, by the way, I'm not, I'm not um, dissing it, but the really important stuff about, you know, um, how to mix, how to record, how to apply EQ and compression, etc., etc. I'm not going to go into that stuff because there are other people who do it a lot better than I will do it. I'm kind of new to this. I'm still learning that stuff as I go along. But I feel much better qualified to talk about how, how a song comes about um, or what happens when you think you've got a song and then it kind of slips away because, boy, that happens quite often. Or when you think it's brilliant and then by the time you finished it, you hate it. Or the other way around. Um, that's what I'm trying to explore in this. And this is a very exciting and special episode because uh, for the last year or so, I have been involved in a kind of quite surprising collaboration. And I say surprising because I didn't really see it coming and even when it kind of kind of got underway um you know i i think i just had no particular expectations um um and we're, we're going to talk a little bit about this but basically what i'm going to do um is introduce you to my um collaborator if i can use such a strange term um and he's a guy who lives locally um he's you know, he'll introduce himself, I think, really. I don't need to do these introducing for him. Um, and this is interesting and new because for the very first time in any of these episodes, I'm going to be talking to somebody who's sitting right here rather than on a Zoom camera somewhere in somewhere else on the planet. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, yeah, kick back and listen. We're, now, look, I just want to say we're quite excited about what we've done because apart from anything else, it was a bit of a surprise and we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that. Um, so I know you've not heard a single note of what the collaboration sounds like, but we are now on the verge of um, getting something out into the public sphere. We will be releasing, you know, a track and then another and another and another pretty soon. And we are, I think it's safe to say, quite excited about what it sounds like really it's a unique thing anyway sit back enjoy and um i'm going to pass you over to um well to me talking to cj see you in a minute <laughs> Well, hello again. Um, I have got with me my very special guest, uh, who's going to be well. He's going to endure his um, first interview from me, which is I'm you know I'm very grateful. Um, this is CJ, and um, we are going to be putting out music together. And we're going to just explain a little bit of this to you and tell you some of the story um, of what we are calling Gold Talk Foxes. Yes. So stand by. This is the debut, the very exciting um, um, introduction to CJ. And CJ, first of all. You live around the corner, don't you? You're like a Literally. Hammersmith. You're a Hammersmith boy. Yeah. yeah Would you life. describe yourself as a Hammersmith boy? Born and bred. That's, it's really important just to kind of, you know, keep things local. I it's think it's, um, that's all good. Um, and, um, right, let's go back to the beginning of your kind of musical uh, childhood with influences and stuff like that. I'm quite interested to know, when you were, when you were little, mm. what, was, what was your first, who was your first kind of big idol where you thought, God, I, you know, I love this person, I want to, I want to sing like them, I want to be like them. Who, who was the first? The first person in music or group I ever bought was the Spice Girls, but there were too many idols in there to choose from. So who, hang on, who was your favourite Spice Girl? Baby Spice and Jerry, yeah. No, you can only have one. 
Yeah, well, baby, baby yeah. spice. Yeah. Okay. But I was young then. I would choose um, scary spice now. She's got the most flair <laughs> and the best body. You can't, you can't, you can't do this. Anyway, it's all right. So one, kind of once the Spice Girls had been and gone, was that was that it? Usher. Usher. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. why? Why? What was? What was? What did Usher have apart from huge success? Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, a really good voice. Yeah. Um, a, I'd say a good voice. I mean, as in not just the tone, but also what he was singing about. Mostly girls, but other stuff as well. The moves. Yeah, he was a really good. The dancer. budget for the videos. And yeah, <laughs> no, I, all of it was good. Yeah, just very talented, very talented guy. So, did you did you want to like sing like that? Was that the way? Was that influential musically as well as just thinking? He's got the whole package. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I th I prefer Michael Jackson as an artist and this and the other, but I definitely saw myself being more following Usher's career, if anything, rather than Michael Jackson's career. But with the success levels, mm. Mm. You know, the sky is not even the limit. But um, yeah, I'd model myself more to Usher than he's, MJ. And he's gone a bit quiet though, what's, what's, he, what's he up to? Have you been in touch with him recently or...? To be fair, nobody, uh, nobody likes his wife, isn't it? His fans started saying his wife's Don't listen, ugly don't listen. Is, Allegedly. Allegedly, it's true. <laughs> no, because he was going out with Chili from TLC. Oh, yeah, And yeah. it was very public and in the songs that he had cheated on her and blah, blah, blah. And I think maybe it was with the woman he ends up being his wife or she came late. So I bet anyway, the fans were just... They didn't feel they having it. That was it. And then oh, he started defending Lord. his wife, obviously, to fans, which you can't start arguing with your fans. And so then... That, that's so big fallout. <laughs> that's, that's all bad, luckily, yes. He, luckily, he discovered Viva. Oh, yeah, terrible. Okay, good. That's a big step backwards. Good. And right, so what about bring it up to kind of like today? I mean, what do you what do you listen to? If you've got, you know, an hour spare and anything you could put your hands on, what what mm. what what's what's influencing you today in, in recent times? Instrumentals of like um I don't know, classical music or Spanish guitar or jazz or f folk or anything like this, instrumentals or Old school R and B, yeah, old school R and B. I really love this this whole concept, this whole expression, this whole time period. And when you say old school, I think you mean the nineties, don't you? Most of all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Early nineties, maybe late eighties. And some of those, swing. and some of those kind of soul groups. I mean, I'm, I know this because he, he keeps playing these things to me, like S W V. That was the first name on uh, first name on my list. Yeah, S W V. Early Mary J Blige, um, Elia, definitely, TLC. definitely TLC. Um, on Vogue. Yeah. Who else? From that Faith. I, I Faith liked um, Brownstone. Brownstone as well. The list goes on and yeah. on and on. Yeah. No, it's a good. It was a good era. So it's interesting, isn't it? I know we're we're just Monica um, and Brandy and Maya. And Monica sorry. and Brandy. And who's the other one? Maya. Are we, did we mention Aaliyah? Yeah. Yeah. I did. yeah we Because um, right. So when did that? When did that little era of of R and B sort of morph into something else? When did it end? I mean. It's because it was a very yeah, well, precise time, wasn't it? And then it's sort of gone. I feel like Destiny's Child kind of took it, or was the group that took it somewhere new because they came out with like No 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 in their first album mm. that didn't really do too well, but they had this brownstone, blah blah blah, blah kind of um, much more feel. And then going into poppy R and B with that Survivor album, this was really my era. That's my see. I I um, agree. I kind of agree yeah. with you because I've always blamed Destiny's Child for ruining. And that was when TLC as well weren't so popular anymore. Three girls, three girls. Yeah, never, really never good. Destiny's Child fan. Now I've, I've just turned off like half the people watching. Good. So um, so okay. So about a year ago, mm. um, we got started with actually writing songs. Um, so we started collaborating, and it's a weird thing because you don't. When you start collaborating, I, I don't think you you think at the beginning, oh, this is going to be something. You just think, oh, let's let's okay, let's have another go with another song, and see what happens, kind mm. of thing. You're not making plans. You're not thinking, let's make an album. No, at no point did we ever say, oh, let's write an album. No. So no. how did how so how's this how's this evolved? How I know right. We started with Bad at Love. I don't know from your point of view. You were bringing your brother, he was going to play some acoustic guitar and we didn't really know each other. What was your expectations of that, of that whole thing? Expectations of it? Yeah, I don't know, to just get something down that I could hear back and take it from there, yeah, to finally get a complete sound, because you know, like, 
you've got the main line, then you've got the backing vocals, and you've got the harmonies, you've got things dropping in and out, and you can hear it all in your head, mm. but you can't sing all the bits, and then, yeah, just to get it down, hear it back. And what did you, and when you did hear it back, what did you think? And, and the reason I'm asking is, I, I thought, well, this is interesting. I've never really recorded another person before, particularly somebody who's actually got a good voice, and I've never recorded acoustic guitar before, mm. so this has just been an interesting thing to do, mm. and I wonder what I can make of it. Is that, so that's basically where I was coming from, thinking, I wonder if you'll like it, even. Mm. For me, I would say it's like I'm getting that hit of dopamine where it just made me um, very, not satisfied, but very happy and thirsty to do more, try something new. Yeah, just part of a whole... Uh, d yeah. Did your brother yes. like it? Yeah, did definitely he? a lot. Oh, yeah. okay. that's, that's yeah. He says that the version that we've done is just slightly different place, places. He prefers it to the one that he originally. Oh, okay. That's that's quite okay. That's quite a high accolade. Thank you. All right. But that's now. See, Battle Love is the first song that we sort of recorded. It's not a collaboration because I didn't have any part in the writing of it. Did, Neither did I. No, it says it's entirely. <laughs> it's entirely your brother's but it song. It was written for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's and it's it's so that is in our kind of repertoire of tracks that might get released at some point in the future. So that's listen up for bad at love. So that okay. So that happened. Then w I remember we did a few cover versions, which was like a bit of a stepping stone of getting to know each other and how we operate and mm, voices, how does this work and all that stuff. And coming in here and recording, which was also interesting. I think um, it always is, isn't it? Like it's very sacred or personal space. The the studio. It's quite sense. intimate, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and when you and you're in there with somebody you don't know that well, and you're doing something which is quite personal and exposing. Because I mm. think because you, you know that's why I quite like doing it when there's nobody here. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. So we got through all of that. We did some cover version things, which uh, you know they're okay. They're quite fun. Mm -hmm. But then it kind of got more serious when we started thinking, can we actually write something? And I had no idea whether we could or not. Absolutely no expectations of whether we could get anything down at all that would make any sense to anyone. And I it, still don't remember exactly how that did come about. I remember um, trying to write, or we, yeah, writing something about the planets, and we started looking up like the moon and stuff like this, and we started, you know, trying to do a metaphor of a song of like a relationship and how planets are tied. Where did that go? It, is that the it very is much changed. It turned into like um, revolve around the sun. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've got, I've still that. got that somewhere. I've got it on my phone. I quite like listening to it. We'll have to come back oh. to that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, that's right. That was that very early. Period. Yeah, of like trying to write together and get the piano and the writing going over a bit and over and over again the same loop and trying to write to it. That was sometimes quite. See, because I tell you, I tell you, it's interesting because I I felt like I needed to explain what collaboration was, and yet at the same time, I was really aware that. It was completely different from any other collaboration I'd had. So it was no, I was mm -hmm. no, I wasn't really in the position of being able to say, "Now look, this is what happens when you collaborate." Mm -hmm. yeah. It wasn't that at all because it, it, it was just trying to work out. Okay, so when we write words, how's that going to work? How how do do you ever say to me, "I don't like that." No, don't don't play that bit. Play that bit because at the beginning it was interesting. I think at the beginning I got away with quite a lot, and then then that gradually shifted. So as you got more confident and you kind of know where things are going and maybe where you don't want or things just to be going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you started intervening a bit more, which was quite, <laughs> quite challenging at first because I thought, this is good. I, you know, he just likes everything. That's good. I'm just, <laughs> just carry on. And then gradually, but gradually, yeah, but you were saying, I, I want, I'm hearing this, mm -hmm. not that, this. And I had to, you know, respond. But he said, I'm, I think I still, at some point, I have to respond. I haven't responded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that was quite worrying as well because, um, I don't know, I, I don't think many, many people have an idea how to express the sounds going on in their heads, falling short of just like speaking them. And then you're like, I don't know, give it this flair, give it this feeling. I don't, I don't, know, yeah, I don't know. Still figuring that out. And, I don't, and to be honest, I don't think that's ever easy because mm -hmm. you're, you're always having to try and explain um, a feeling or describe a, something very um, subjective. And, yeah. I feel like um, the greats, maybe like um, Missy Elliott and Timberland, we get that symbiosis over time where we just 
Yeah, the collaboration is less of a collaboration, but more of like a, a new unit. I think so. I think, that's, I think that's right. A new brain so, doing stuff. And interestingly, because mm. one or two of my friends have heard little bits and pieces of what we've done, and I think they are surprised how different it is from what I've done. And I, we were just mm. having this conversation earlier on, and I'm sort of thinking, well, of course it's different because it's it's me collaborating. It would, it, It'd be awful if it, if it was actually the same. Yeah. That would be yeah. a failed collaboration, wouldn't it? Just sit down um, and shut yeah, up. Yeah, it means, right, I'm just going to tie you up in the corner. Yeah. I'm going to run upstairs and record something, and you just sit there. Sign that. No, so that's that's not a really, that's not the way forward. But I still, I suppose, to be fair, they're just thinking, actually, that's quite a big step in a, in a different direction. So for me, mm. I found it, you know, during the course of a frustrating year with you know with you know what going on around um it's been it's been you know really good to have something like this to focus on where it isn't um run of the mill and sometimes okay sometimes here's another thing sometimes you come around and we're thinking right let's write something but really neither of us are really feeling very creative you know mm -hmm. it's like we're thinking okay let's see what happens and then and then you know, miraculously, even out of that, something really good can happen. Like, can, I react. Yeah. I was both having a totally feeling that day, yeah. It's like, oh, okay, look, come on, well, let's give it a go. You know, otherwise you might as well go home, you know. Um, uh, yeah, and it happened really quickly yeah. out of that. That's really, that's good, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. I don't know, I can't explain how that happens. It just, it just does. And then you think, oh, that's good. It changes the day as well, or like instantly changes the mood, and then, yeah, you can run with it. Yeah, no, I think so. Right, so I've, I've talked too much, but have you ever been have you ever been surprised when those things have worked? Because, like, we didn't know each other. We're, you know, uh, I'm maybe a year or two older than you, and um, oh, yeah. it's, it's a couple of months actually. It's a couple of months. Just not aging terribly well. But um, so, yeah, yeah. I guess are you ever surprised? Does it surprise you? Do you think? Um, this, you know, well, in a way, it's interesting because because we're quite different, um, and yet it's it's still we've come up with this sort of sound that's quite unique. Surprising, yes, I think because in my head, always I was always working towards something. I was working towards something I guess that I'd heard before from another artist. I guess in essence, um, so when it wasn't coming out like that, that was very worrying at first. But then taking a step back, listening to it for what it was, it was surprising. Just in a sense that it was really like, oh wow, mm. I like this. Like a, it like, seems to be working. Yeah, I like I really like this in its own right. It doesn't have to. Yeah, the fact that it didn't match what I wanted it to be it was very yeah. Well, I'm not going to repeat myself. <laughs> what so? And when you when you first came and sang in here, mm. was it no? Was it nerve wracking for you? Yeah, very. I know we just touched on this before, but I think because I, I think I didn't really I didn't really expect you. To, I I just thought right, we're going to go and sing now. Mm -hmm. Right, come mm -hmm. on, let's just go and sing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, we've decided what we're going to sing. In fact, some, uh, most of the time we'd rehearse it downstairs. So I'm just thinking, right, so we're just going to do it with the microphone. But actually, what you were thinking is, blimey. Yeah, everything. Like, no, you have to be, obviously be perfect for every millisecond of the song. Cause yeah, that's, that's right. And, um, yeah, that's right. Because otherwise, I'm going to have to do like live performance. Throw out, the, so much throw easier, out all that tape. From yeah, no, it's not. It gets logical, like any fear. But live live performance is so much easier because I I know you could just flow with it and the the acoustics of the room, whatever. But recorded, I know I go into and have you, this is recorded mode. How much? How much have you? How much have you performed live in front of an audience? I did perform in art school, so I guess I did it quite a bit when I was young, but not for for quite a long time. So if we go out, if we go out and do like open mics or or a couple of gigs, that would be pretty much as novel for you as it is for me. Yeah. I thought you you were supposed to say no. I've done this like loads. And I've I got really... your back, but I mean it's it's, I mean, it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think a bit of rehearsal is probably going to be in order for that. Okay, yeah. good. Now look, we were having a conversation earlier on today about what what of our songs um, we might release as a single, and we were thinking there's about there's a bunch of five or six, any of which. Um, that's a sign of confidence in there. Any of which I think we could start with, but we've we're probably going to release the one called "Don't Take Much" as our debut 
single, collaboration single. Don't so much right. What, CJ? What's it about? What's what's what what was in your head when we were starting doing those lyrics? Um, the people, including me, I guess, but excluding me for now. People should appreciate each other more for for who they are. And um, yeah, it doesn't hurt to to say that sometimes. I mean, even to give someone a little confidence boost. It's like on the lyrics. Um, what what are we saying in in the in what's the chorus? Don't take much. Don't take much to get things going. Um, yeah, basically, it doesn't need to be so complicated to for it to get anything. Yeah, a good time uh, yeah, to get it going. Yeah, just, don't think about it. Just, yeah, yeah. And and in the verses, is it the same similar? Same, the nuances are, are, are cool. Like I'm, when the fact that we're not the same is plain to see when you're with me. But when we, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yes. To you and the way that you move, I would never ask you to change. There's and there's a bit about winning on. On the same team, I can never remember that. That's a nice lyric. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Well, listen, that is going to be the first one. That will be the one that. Um, we will, we need a bit of polishing up and then it will get a release shortly. So probably I'd say sometime in March that is going to be released. That will be the debut uh, Gold Hawk Foxes single and um, there will be many more to come. So we've been, um, we've been looking at all those aspects of getting a, a new project off the ground such as what does it, what does it look like on a, you know, on the cover art what what's the right font to use all that kind of stuff so there's there's quite a lot to get into yeah that what how do you present it as well as how does it sound and all that kind of stuff and then we will actually have to think about how do we how do we put a video across because that's going to be another Lyric thing video, to, yeah do you reckon coming up across the screen is that that's it is it Killer. i think spielberg does that as well is it we're not putting we're not putting our faces on the on the cover art i mean uh, i've left uh, my fox face somewhere else no, we, yeah, we, I think we can just, I think we can, we're going to try and be mysterious, that's it. We can have maybe like a fox, a fox mask. You get we, like I'm sure we can, we'll get a fox mask each. And then we could be like Daft Punk with like just never perform without a mask on. Mm. You heard it here first. All right, I think that's it for today. And um, it, thank you for coming along and You're very being well my guest. Been on it has. No, I mean, thank you. I mean, and, um, and well, we'll be back shortly. Um, thank you. Thank you. Well, as you can see, the, you know, our conversation kind of came to an end there. Um, and it's also worth saying we didn't we didn't rehearse having a conversation. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't want to interview CJ. I mean, that's that would just be like a bit weird. So that was just a conversation where, you know, it went where it went to. And we didn't we, you know, we didn't know we didn't know where it was going to go to. So I hope that um, kind of looked as natural as it kind of felt, because there's no point trying to do a. Um, a nice spontaneous chat and preparing it and rehearsing it beforehand that would just be horrible anyway that's it um do stand by obviously for the very first single from gold hawk foxes don't take much that will be released shortly we've still got a little bit of work to do but not much um and then there'll be plenty more after that so hence the excitement um thank you very much for watching stay safe look after yourself i'll see you next time for another adventure in pop Bye bye